softly spoken mission to help shy people be more mighty. Shy people don't need fixing. We don't need to change who we are. But in a world filled with noise and hot air, it's time for us to speak up and stop hiding. Hello and welcome to Shy and Mighty with me, Nadia Finer, and today I'm joined by the fabulous Ellie Daly, um, who is the founder and CEO of an innovative online recruiting platform called Intro30.com. And Ellie's here to tell us a bit more about her business and also her journey from Shy to Mighty, as well as offering us some amazing tips on on how to find your dream job when you're a shy person and how to navigate the recruitment process, perhaps if you're a little bit scared or lacking in confidence. So Ellie, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Nadia. I'm a huge fan of your work. This is a wonderful podcast. Thank you very much. Oh, for thank me. you. <laughs> thank you. So do you want to start by telling us a little bit about Intro 30 and um, yeah, and the work that you do? Great. So I have been recruiting for many years and have always been on the side of the candidate. It is a hugely exhausting, vulnerable, and demoralizing time sometimes looking for for work. And it's something that we can help with and that you can help with as as an individual by being your best self. So I built Intro 30 to empower and encourage candidates to be themselves, to be authentic, to introduce themselves with 30-second videos as part of a professional and shareable profile, including a resume, which isn't going anywhere but it's just not enough. And uh, so they can introduce themselves and um, yeah, say hello to their future employer. Um, And what do you think makes a good intro video? Um, Well, whatever makes you smile, whatever makes you happy. It's 30 seconds. So you can't uh, go on too long about your, you know, favorite colors or... (laughs) whatever uh you can't uh yeah and and it's very democratic in that you can just press record and off you go um we have one candidate who recorded their video in the the airport i wouldn't necessarily recommend that a lot of background noise but also just clarity uh openness honesty smile look us in the eye and say hello you know it's it's an authentic connection it's it's being invited into the room where, you know, throughout, as I'm sure everybody has experienced the recruitment process, it can be very much a question of sending out your resume and never hearing back. Um, and if you do get invited to an interview, it takes time, it's scheduling, it's this, it's that, and it's often over the phone, which can be awkward or difficult. And this way you have ownership of the introduction process you as the candidate can put forward your best um you know your best introduction your best first impression it's an elevator pitch it's a an audition tape almost to say look this is me I know my resume maybe this maybe that but I'm a great worker and I will turn up every day with a smile on my face and I have good energy and commitment and you know I'm fun to be around and that is what we look for when we you know, hire people, I think. I think when you first told me about this and um, explained the concept, the idea of of a video, um, an elevator pitch style video, I felt a kind of shudder go through (laughs) me. (laughs) I mean, I'm not looking for a job, but um, uh, the idea of it kind of freaked me out slightly. But I, having thought about it some more, I do you like the idea that you're in control and that it's something which um, you can, you know, do 85 takes before you find one that you're happy with? You can write a script and prepare what you want to say. And so in that way, it feels like the risks are lower because you are producing something which you're ultimately, you know, content with enough to... Um, to hit send or upload rather than you know the first impression being 
slightly more haphazard left a chance including like mumbling and (laughs) stuttering and blushing etc this feels like something yeah something which you can produce to a higher standard and feel happy with so yeah on the one hand it sounds kind of scary but on the other hand I, I think that there's definitely a lot of advantages to being able to produce something like this up front if somebody's considering applying for a job and their shyness is perhaps holding them back or they they've got the doubts and they're not sure they can do it as a recruiter what kind of advice would you give someone particularly when you know that they're perfectly capable of doing the job itself um it's just navigating this process of kind of selling yourself it's really tough there's no magic pill um to to take that will suddenly make you the most attractive candidate it's hugely competitive and the average job has over 100 applicants and one person gets the job one person's the winner the rest of the applicants you know aren't going to be are are losers effectively because it is an exercise in rejection and it's really tough especially for the very popular companies very popular jobs you know, it is, um, I think, a numbers game. It's about being resilient. It's about being open to applying for many things and expecting not a lot back. I always say apply for at least 100 jobs, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, goodness. why not? I mean, your chances, I mean, I live in America now. It's, you know, coming from England, which is a nice, small place, it's not as as overwhelming. But here, it's enormous. And you you know, the jobs I was working in house recruitment with, you know, 30, 40 open requisitions at any one time. And they would have hundreds of applicants in each one, which is an overwhelming amount of resumes to read for any recruiter. So the trick really to get noticed, to get seen, to get, you know, in front of the right person so that you can demonstrate your capabilities is the trick. And you need to make sure that you are very targeted about who you speak to and make sure that they have the decision making process and your CV doesn't just go to the bottom of an enormous database of, of hundreds of other people who, you know, I would say many are qualified or at least think they are. Um, it's really about demonstrating your competence and, and it's very a tough pill to swallow for, for us Brits to toot our own horns and blow our own trumpets. But, it's a competitive world out there and you just need to make sure you're tooting your horn in front of the right person at the right time in the right way. Um, uh, But be prepared for rejection. It's tough. It is tough. God, sounds (laughs) difficult. Exhausting, right. Exhausting. And there's so many things in there which are tough. The whole tooting of one's own horn is something which, we find tricky and I know that it's so hard and I know that um in in situations where I feel like other people are tooting their own horns not a euphemism um I feel even less inclined to do it myself you know I it makes me kind of shrink And what have we seen other than, you know, utter incompetence on both sides of the Atlantic tooting very large horns? You know, it doesn't fill you with anything other than the desire to go and hide under a a very large blanket. But unfortunately, I feel and what is fortunate, actually, is a result of this huge amount of pontification is coming voices like yours, like, you know, the Michelle Obamas and the Brené Browns. And it's almost this, this female voice that is arising as a, as a reaction against that, that chest beating that we see um, every day. And, and I'm really hearing voices that are not um, tooting their own horns. They're really just being voices of reason and voices of, of competence. Um, and that includes empathy and vulnerability and kindness and emotion and, and realness, authenticity. Um, you know, I was moved to tears by Elizabeth Warren and the little Instagram video. You know, there's, there's a real warmth 
that is emerging in the face of such arrogance. And I do think that things are changing. And how do you show that? I mean, you've got a podcast, that's one step, but the individual who is looking for a job, how do they get their voices heard? How do they rise above this crazy noise and present themselves as being human and kind and empathetic and compassionate and the kind of person you want to sit next to at work from Monday to Friday. Um, that is a human connection. And I'm, I'm really encouraged by the, the, the voices that are rising. Um, and I just, you know, want to empower everybody to be seen and heard. Yes. Now this is what we can get behind the idea that, that humanness, humanity, um, and warmth and competence wins out in the end. And that rather than, you know, seeing other people beating their chests, like you say, shouting and look at me, look at me, I'm awesome, everybody hire me, buy my stuff, um, pay attention to me, I'm amazing, you, you know, um, excuse me everyone, get out of my way, that right. kind of attitude. We don't need to be like that, do we? Because ultimately that's just not who we are. And the moment we even try <laughs> to be like that, um, there's a there's a kind of disconnect, isn't there? It's inauthentic. Absolutely. It's uncomfortable. It's jarring. It's, it's weird. <laughs> it's weird. And <laughs> it's extraordinary that it's gone this far, uh, that yeah. people aren't. And, and they will have physical reactions to it. I get, you know, I'm a bit bunged up today. You know, there's a, I get physically ill when I'm stressed or in a position where I feel uncomfortable, like my body reacts and I feel like we will have a reaction to it because it, it you can't keep it up. No. And the competition in corporate America is, is it's very damaging. It there's, 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 it's, it's too much. You need to have more vacation days and, and be kinder to each other and have communities and people are crying out for that mm. um, connection. Um, but the noises, as you say, that we hear everywhere are shouty and angry and violent. And it's, it's got to change. I, I think so too. And um, bringing it back to recruitment and finding, finding a job, um, succeeding at work. Yes. I, I feel like coming at it from the angle of competence and talking about um the impact that we can have within an organization um the impact that we can have on our colleagues the actual work <laughs> rather than yes. um the size of our ego or um the shiny you know, shiny the shine yeah mm. less shiny shiny and more <laughs> um <laughs> Concrete. Real, concrete. <laughs> yes. No, I think yeah. most people leave their jobs because of their manager. And I think that that relationship is, is not talked about enough. Mm. Um, you know, people apply for jobs at shiny places because of the brand, because of this. And I always say, you know, be very careful. Um, all that glitters isn't gold. And make sure that your management is a mentorship situation that you will get given um, trust and warmth and kindness and empowerment and not crazy targets or, you know, a sense of you have to fit in with this culture or this is, we, we work hard, play hard, you know, there, there are sort of buzzwords that fly around that to mm -hmm. me smack of toxicity and of environments that aren't truthful. There's a wonderful book called it doesn't need to be crazy at work by the guys who uh, built base camp. And, Ooh. you know, it's, it's fantastic. It's very, it's just very normal about being a human and wanting to, you know, go surfing at lunchtime if you want to, or, you know, just working the, the nine to five and then going home and not being reachable all weekend or not working crazy hours. And I think that the thrive, you know, Ariana Huffington, and there's, there's a real kind of push against this, this, hyper drive of competition and, and smashing it and, and being this this sort of superhuman um that just isn't us you know we're just not human it's just 
it's just it's gonna kill us um and yeah. we need to be more compassionate and kind so my advice to someone if you're looking for work is to just dig a little deeper into what really motivates you what's your intrinsic motivation and and what makes you happy and you know go for environments that that aren't going to make you feel uncomfortable every day and I, I'm, I'm the perfect example of this I really shouldn't be in recruitment like it, I started <laughs> off you know because I needed a job and it's it was it's very high you know pressure sales which is totally wrong for my personality completely but what I did love about it was was the joy of, of helping people find jobs and that has has sustained me and fulfilled me in the you know the last 20 years but I do think if I could have had more time to really I you know identify what my joys are then my career would have looked very different but make sure that when you do interview as well that you it's a two-way street and you do realize the power isn't all with them and I think a lot of the fear of rejection of of, of fitting in of, of making a good impression and in the interview stems from not believing in yourself as a really good option for them um yeah. which i think is is a power play and it comes a little bit unkindly, it, it comes a little bit down to uh people pleasing i think because i know that personally i've been in situations where you go for a job you get through to the sort of the end of the process yes. and you want them to want you you do so no, you ignore it's... like in maybe relationships you, yes, you sometimes the ignore red flags the red flags <laughs> and often the, often there are many and you think oh that will be fine that will improve and the chances are if there is even the smallest red flag um at a certain run point, run, run it's, away. it's not going to be better when you've been there for a few years and chances yes. are you're only seeing um you know certain signs and I think as a shy person I would be on the lookout like you said for some compassion um yes. and flexibility and kindness. kindness yes if you're treated with disdain from the top you know from the start and again people are busy and I understand that but if I get a a dismissive email or a kind of rude one-liner email I, I will my heckles go up and I feel like okay does he do they I say he um do, do they talk to everybody <laughs> like this um you know is this how you're going to speak to me when we're having a cup of coffee at you know at work is this how I'll be treated because yes everybody's busy but there's no need to be unkind ever and um kindness I think is the the key to to happiness really for for everybody and if you treat people kindly um and the minute, as you say, you see a little red flag of unkindness or, or just something not quite off, it's, I mean, it can knock me back. Uh, people being unkind to me can just shatter any confidence that I have. Um, and it's, it's not about me, it's about them. And that's a key thing to remember is that if anybody treats you badly, it's, it's on them. And it's mm-hmm. up to us to put ourselves back together again. But ultimately, it's, um, it's not our fault that people are unkind to us, you know, or bully us. It's, it's really them and what unkindness or violence they've seen to, to, to make them feel that they can treat people like that. But it yeah. becomes, when it becomes more and more visible on all levels and at, at the highest level of the country that you can talk to people like that. And, mm. and that, that is what worries me. This is why I've sort of stood up and said, you know, I, okay, it's people like us who have to stand up against this bullying Mm -hmm. and to make the world safer and kinder. Um, Because if we don't, as as you said in many podcasts, the, 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 the default is to go and hide, but actually if we do that, then they've won and we have to stand up. Yeah. We, and we can't, we can't let them win. And I think it's interesting when, when you consider, say, an organization and the culture of an organization, often you see people recruit in their own image. Um, (laughs) So you may get the people at the top who are, you know, loud, perhaps more, uh, 
bullish kind of confident yeah, types yeah. yeah and then they're recruiting more and more people who fit that mold so I'm just wondering in your experience how how you feel about that and whether that is another red flag for people like us to avoid those kinds of organizations or do you think there are organizations who understand that you need a balance of people well it's a complicated answer there I mean I think um I did a talk about this about Silicon Valley hiring and did some research into the the demographics here and um it's what's called an intellectual monoculture when you have a couple of charismatic leaders who then hire in their image or even hire their friends because there is that element of trust and familiarity, which our, you know, our brains, our amygdalas do prefer to work in that sort of fight or flight. They will, they will lean towards familiarity and it is natural. Um, but it is now proven in so many ways that diversity creates more wealth happiness and joy for everybody so you know we should have closed that chapter unfortunately when you are when you are building a business and you do lean towards what you know and what you're familiar with it is difficult to implement um, other things and I think the most successful and diverse teens that I've seen here in Silicon Valley have prioritized recruitment over everything. One very good um, company has 70 people of which seven are recruiters. So one in 10 people are actually recruiting and spending their time, you know, really looking at and looking for people talking to as many people as they can, making sure that they hit metrics around diversity and inclusion and that they, you know, they, they really understand the value of getting the right people in from the beginning. But yeah, if you, if you, you, you know, your knee jerk reaction is to hire what you recognize, um, mm. it, it's going to be difficult. But I think, you know, from a candidate's perspective, that doesn't help anybody. You know, we, we can't turn ourselves into, the spitting image of the founder. So how do you navigate that? And I think, how do you know where to apply? Which companies don't do that? Which companies are really flying the flag of, of inclusion? And it's difficult to really see that from the outside. You need to really be in that environment to really understand whether or not they live by the values that they show on their website. Um, so I'd like hard. them to have a badge, actually. <laughs> I think there should be like a sticker <laughs> which um which organizations can have to show that they um that they consider you know they're considerate towards shy people yes. and that they oh, that sounds bonkers, but it's Glassdoor was very good at that. Um but it only from the interview onwards. But Glassdoor is a wonderful um tool to help identify what may or may not be a good fit and you don't need horses for courses you know some people will thrive in some environments that I you know I, I would just cry every day if I went into those places and other people you know adore it um it's really it's really difficult to know where it will be best for you because it all does hang on the the personality really of the boss. Uh, if you're an immediate boss and the team that they have built and the team that they are grooming, and, and if that is, environment is safe and inclusive and fun and happy and welcomes you from the beginning, then the chances are you'll feel safe and therefore you'll be able to, thur- to flourish. Um, and have, have you seen um, organizations talk about um being more inclusive towards quieter, more shy people? Um, I can't say that I have, honestly. I think, um, and, and certainly, I mean, I've worked all around the world and culturally these, the behaviour of people is very different, um, in, especially in meetings and in, environment of office environments 
Um, but no, I can't say, I think, especially in America, you know, each yeah. man for themselves, really. It's like, if you don't speak up, you won't be heard, um, which I think is tough. And then in culture, say in Japan, where it's very impolite to speak up and, and then so things happen behind the scenes, which is where you and I feel more comfortable engaging, but then, you know, to an America, in America, that's considered to be almost duplicitous if you go behind you have to say it to the face and that's very difficult for for people like us who are a little bit more um wary of confrontation in any way so you know how you are perceived and how you behave differs in the eye of the beholder in in all these different environments and it's very hard to have again a sort of magic pill um, and all you can do is really be yourself and accept yourself and, and accept other people and try and step forward with kindness and compassion. But no, I, I feel like it happens from a micro level. I would have yeah. seen teams improve their engagement with each other on a micro level, just from the changing of the attitude of the boss or changing the boss or, you know, it does drip down and there is, um, there is a, a knock on effect from having a leader who can be kind as opposed to a leader who leads by fear, you know, the, the carrot or the stick. Yeah. Uh, and I think, so I think firstly, we could all move to Japan. That would be, <laughs> that would be fun. Um, also, yeah, I, I, I think there's work to be done there raising awareness and, but hopefully as more and more people um, do speak up and do, show um their their strength their quieter strengths hopefully that like you say it does filter down um but also um not changing who you are not going to work in a company where right. you're forced to have to pretend to be something you're not Compromise. Or it just is so uncomfortable and like literally painful to have to go to work and be something it's physically with, painful it's and terrible. i remember so many yeah. years in my 20s sort of physically not wanting to go to work it was just really i would use any excuse not to have to go into the office yeah. it was just horrific and i think you can live your whole life like that or you and and try and be something that you see as being successful and it's it's not success if it it does if it feels like that it's it the definition is wrong um what gives you joy what gives you a sense of fulfillment and peace and that intrinsic motivation and that's why I love recruiting I'm so nosy I love looking at what motivates people I love seeing their journeys and how the decisions they've made and why they made those decisions um but so much of it is really finding that joy um and you could be like this, I met this guy in a shop the other day and he just emanated this joy and he was selling dishwashers. And I was just like, you, <laughs> I would, I love your energy. I want to work with you. I would, I would literally just, he just radiated this enthusiasm about what he was doing and he found joy in it. And it's just, that is so rare and that's so special and that's what, you know, we, we need to cultivate. And then all the fear goes away, all the shyness does sort of dissipate. If you feel what you're doing is right and that it's great and then it makes you happy and joyful, then you don't feel the fear. And that, I think, is key to, to being happy at work and finding an environment that works for you. In the work that I've done, um, talking to you, lots and lots and lots of shy people, um, one thing... Um, a continuous thread seems to be woven through um, everything and that is that when we feel knowledgeable and prepared like we know what we're doing yes. um, we the fear like you say the fear fades away um, and so rather than trying to um, do things which are so far removed from our comfort zone pretending to be something that we're not delivering it in a way that feels awkward and horrible there's nothing I I mean I don't think there's anything to be ashamed of in doing something which builds on your strengths um and yet it's not something people really talk about so much I think that this the idea of success being pitched as someone who's brave and fierce who's pushing people out the way um 
is is far removed from the idea of someone who is really good at something <laughs> knows yes. knows what they're doing has spent time preparing and learning and building up skills and knowledge and is therefore comfortable um doing that thing you know there's it, that is a that's a good thing right being comfortable <laughs> delivering what you do rather than it's, feeling it's like you have to be... be stretched the whole time absolutely I, I cringe at that too I always have I mean it's a comfort zone for a reason because we thrive in it and we we mm. feel our best selves in it and it's it's you know I'm all for for being challenged to a certain extent but if you are making yourself ill over it then there's 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 no joy there there's no happiness and there's certainly no success to be had unless you know you're a marathon runner or something you know and you're in a very competitive environment that makes you you know makes you thrive but for for the majority of us and I think what I love about this podcast is you know most of us are shy most of us are everybody has their stuff that they're dealing with you know yeah. nobody has a, a, a you know kind of cookie cutter approach what they have done is mask it beautifully um and they're fooling us all but the reality is we all wake up and look at ourselves in the mirror and have to deal with that person and you can always find fault and you'll always find issues and people have their hang-ups and they're this and they're that but I feel like you know and you said it a couple of times in the in your podcast is about seeing other people and helping other people in the joy of connection and the joy of authenticity and to be able to rise above any issues. And I mean, being, I think maybe it's the only child thing. I've always been very morbidly aware of my mortality and how short life is <laughs> and how, you know, if I spend my time spiraling in my head and worrying about what people would think of, oh my goodness, what, what, what did she say? What did she, why did she say that? Oh my goodness. You know, and, and you kind of can spiral your way in. And I, I goodness me, I've just wasted how many minutes thinking about this? Mm. Let's put this to one side and move forward because we haven't got all day. You know, we haven't got long. And I do think that it's important to, to focus on the positive, focus on the good, focus on the kind, focus on the people who make you feel better about yourself and not on the people who make you feel worse. And then, you know, and if you go into an interview and that person makes you feel bad about yourself in any way, then walk out um, because, as you say, this is it's reflective of the entire environment, um, which is not going to be a supportive one. And there should be, like you say, there's joy in this. Like work to me is joy. It's yes. fun. It's interesting, and there's a, a richness to it. And the the word thrive really sticks for me I love that idea that we can almost reframe a comfort zone as being a kind of as a, a circle of th thriving yes. <laughs> or something we need a better name for it something jazzy I'll have to think of it think but, about it um, I'll, I'll get on that bandwagon <laughs> definitely yeah the idea <laughs> that we're when because stepping out of your comfort zone it's sort of patronizing um yes. it sounds um patronizing and scary at the same time and somehow staying in your comfort zone is is to be sniffed, yeah sniffed at and weak and, and it's okay if you're like a 13 14 year old going on your first camping trip in the rain <laughs> and you know fine all right I'll step out of my comfort zone and yes I'll, I'll grow with a yeah but you're not an adult and you've been working and I, I mean it's just it is patronizing and it's not necessary, you know, as long as you feel supported and safe, um, you shouldn't have to too many comfort zones. No, and you can, I think there's, it, when you feel safe and secure and supported, you can blossom and that's what we're looking right. for. It's not about, you know, abseiling down a, right. a sheer cliff face, <laughs> wearing 
something deeply unflattering <laughs> or jumping in a shark cage in you know the ocean no thanks very much no, um, or giving a talk in front of four thousand people if that's just you know if you're sweating through all your clothes that's just <laughs> too much well that's an interesting i was thinking about that today about you know what we we're going to talk about and how the value of, of ted talks um is fantastic because that is another avenue for people like Brene Brown and, and, and Cuddy to, to kind of um, showcase their competence and knowledge and research and years of expertise in a short, um, a short little segment, which then, you know, thanks to the joys of the interweb gets spread around and we learn from them uh, in a way that, you know, is, is extraordinary. But I do feel watching watching and having these role models now that that are people who have fought against their fears and and that in a way I think is what people mean when they stay out of your comfort zone it's not you know skiing down a black run after one lesson it's it's kind of okay I'm I'm achieving something I'm getting in the ring and I think that's what I love yeah. about Brene Brown because we, we are terrified of rejection and 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 confrontational people saying bad mean things about us but that's what I, I live by her, you know, get in the ring. And if you're getting your ass kicked in the ring with me, I'll listen to your feedback. But if you're <laughs> in the cheap seats, you know, I'm not going to listen to you. And that really helped me when I was setting up this business was because people really do feel free to give me their opinion. And they don't do that about my kid or anything else really in my life, but they feel like very entitled to give me brutal feedback about what I'm trying to build as a business and yes I, I welcome that but get in the ring and if you have credibility and you have you know experience in this area I'll, I'll happily listen to you but it's it's hard to to do that when you're in the position of oh I need a job and the feedback you're getting from the interview or even if you don't necessarily you aren't getting it but it feels like you're getting it Mm -hmm. um it's very hard to overcome that and you know make it a positive experience because I, ultimately it's it's tough I think it's like like we said before it's a match and it's one in a hundred chance so trying lots of things and I think believing that when the the match is right you'll you will be the chosen one um yes. and in all the situations where you perhaps um, are not a good fit or that there isn't that kind of connection it's for the best um it's a dodge uh, bullet it, yeah. <laughs> oh my god you made me laugh oh, um, <laughs> yes I think we've all dodged a few of those in different areas of our life but let's yes. keep it to recruitment I think um, um, <laughs> So um, <laughs> I think a dodged bullet is a really good way of looking at it. And um, I hope that through this podcast and through um, the work I'm doing with um, the Shine Mighty Society as well, um, that I can give people the confidence not only to step forward and put themselves in for opportunities, but when things don't pan out, rather than questioning everything about yourself, you can start to see that it wasn't the right thing and um, it was for the best, rather than taking every kind of knock back as um, a personal um, insult or a, a front, if you like. And Which is easier said than done. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, it's it's not easy for anybody. And I have a, a six-year-old who just started kindergarten. And, you know, the knot in my stomach of being socially, is she socially acceptable? You know, and I know she is. I know she's great. And she's totally the opposite of shy. She's like a wrecking ball, my, my <laughs> daughter. But, you know, for me, it was just, my goodness, the anxiety was, was and it's it's really difficult and what was interesting to see that transition was how it changes every day and I think that that's something to really remember is how horrible you feel today because of a crappy interview or whatever it is um it'll be fine tomorrow and these people will go on and they'll have another situation you know and if that person is mean to you today they'll be mean to someone else tomorrow but you know it's gone it's finished move on and and maybe the next day karma circles the block you know but it's it's really interesting how how fortunes change and people change and and situations change and 
you know, who is your best friend at kindergarten today could be your worst enemy tomorrow. And then, oh, they're <laughs> friends again on Thursday. And, you know, it's, 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 people are fickle, people change, people are just really interesting and, and weird and wonderful. <laughs> and there's a lot that you could ostensibly be scared of, but realistically, we're all the same. And I think it's it, the energy you spend being nervous of people. Um, but some people thrive on creating that, uh, that intimidation. I think it's a waste of everybody's energy. And I think that's, it's just mean to be like that. So rather than us, um, I think recognizing what someone is doing as being a behavioral pattern, which obviously serves them. And we are just going to dodge that bullet and step, step to that step to the side and keep looking out for your tribe, uh, an organization where you fit, you know, you don't want to be, um, pretending all the time. You want to find the people you feel comfortable with, especially I think, um, when you're shy, being able to tell your colleagues that you are shy and that you struggle with certain things, that is a much easier way of existing because people are going to support you and encourage you rather than having to pretend as the sweat drips off your forehead. <laughs> completely, completely. Is, and but being that honest, you know, I think in America too, it's like that could be construed as weakness. Am I, am I looking weak? And, you know, it's... I think that the conversation is so glacially pacing, but we are moving towards being able to be open and and safe and free and our true selves at work, which is one thing I've really championed and and, an acceptance of yourself, accept of each other and be yourself at work. And yes, explain like I'm deaf in one ear and I have to always explain that because you can't see it. And I am probably, appear to be incredibly rude as I walk away from someone who's talking to me because I can't hear it. <laughs> I didn't know that they were talking to me. But, you know, I have to always explain, like, I'm deaf. If I ignore you, I'm, or, you know, if you have to say the same thing three times, um, you know, I apologize. That's just who I am. And that is, that's unfortunate. But, um, you know, if it's we can It's not unfortunate. That, it's beautiful. Well, it's, it's actually very <laughs> useful when you've got a husband who snores like a train. Um, I can switch off the noise and go to sleep. But um, <laughs> no, it's, it's just with everything. I think once you accept this is who you are and, you know, we all have our limitations. But yeah, finding that safe environment is really hard. And you do have to kiss a lot of frogs and dodge a lot of bullets. But once it happens, once it works, and you do feel like you're in the safe environment, it's the best, best thing. And I think on that note, we will have to wrap this up or we could talk all day. But I love the idea that we're like frog kissing, bullet dodging ninjas <laughs> who are going out into the world. And we're, you know, quietly, quietly blossoming and thriving and achieving great things without the need to beat our chests, which frankly is not a very becoming thing to do. So... <laughs> Ellie, thank you so much for chatting to us today. And tell us, how can we find out more um, about your recruitment platform? And where do we go? And how do we sign up? Well, thank you, Nadia. That was really fun. I really enjoyed talking to you and I could talk to you all day. Um, (laughs) So um, intro30.com, intro30.com is the platform. We're in the Bay Area mainly, so the jobs you see on there are currently in California, but there are quite a few remote ones. And I'm really eventually, very soon, I hope, going to launch the UK version. But you can create your own candidate profile at any point. It's free go on the be hired link on the website and i'm at uh, ellie at intro30.com if you ever want to chat i'm happy to look at resumes happy to talk about interviews happy to talk to anybody who who needs a boost as they look for their new job oh thank you so much ellie that's brilliant and i encourage you to go and check it out and get your video up there (laughs) Yeah. yeah let us know how you get on That's fantastic. Thank you, Ellie. The Shine Mighty Society is a safe place for shy people to shine. Learn specific techniques to help you improve your confidence and overcome limiting beliefs. Make quiet connections with people just like you. Coaching, support and encouragement. 
to coax you out of the shadows and help you reach your goals. Head over to shinemighty.com to find out more.